guys, guys, what's going on? What's going on? So check this out real quick. This is the stock, stock shock, okay? If you look right there, that is actually a little piece that pops out. See, hold on, look, there it is. See, little plastic piece. The reason for this plastic piece is to fill this void up, all right? When you put the shock on the shock screw without the plastic coupler, you can see that the shock is just, it's way too loose. That's not going to work. So, they put the little plastic cap in there and it fills it up quite nice. Now that brings me to my new situation, our new shocks. Now you would think that all I got to do is take the plastic piece out of the stock shock and put it in my new one, right? Wrong! That is not the case at all. This does not fit it no matter how I try to put it. Even if I use like a pair of pliers and try to squeeze it down, you end up with it looking like how it currently looks, all messed up. So, I have a solution for this. What do you do? I must teach you guys right now, what do you do? First thing, you take this. This is just shrink wrap, right? Just a regular thing, a shrink wrap. Now, the tube, as you can see, the tube is too big for the hole. See that? It, it won't go in the hole at all, but it's shrink wrap. So all you gotta do is hit one side of it. Don't put the flame to it, just back it up. And you, you shrink it down a little, right? Now look, now look, see, look at that. It fits perfectly in that hole now, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it We're gonna cut it. Then you have to put this cap on, right? So that cap goes on like that, and then the shock's supposed to fit up inside there. So once I get that on, I have to then get this inside and slide it all in and lock it all together. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna put it in the shock, okay, like that. I'm just gonna put it in the shock and we're just gonna cut it. Um, I think I'll just cut it right in front of it. That's our final product, right? That's what it needs to look like. But you're thinking, hey man, that's still not going to quite fill in the gap. I know, that's why you go down to a slightly smaller tube. And then you put this tube inside of that tube. See what I'm doing? So let's just kinda heat this up. I don't want it too much and you just insert it till it gets about like that for any extended a period of time we'll tell you that sometimes you gotta you gotta macgyver some stuff you know you gotta rig it up and that's basically what we're doing right now we're rigging this thing up we're rigging it for success all right so these two pieces now can go inside each other. Now, check it out. It's going to be a tight fit. Like that. Look at that. See that? Nice and snug. Boom. Winning. My method works. Check this out. This is the stock shock. All right. Look how much play the shock has. I didn't I haven't messed with it. So that still has that coupler little adapter thing in it. But look how much, like, look how much the shock moves. See that? Like, that's a lot of movement, right? Now check mine out. Look at mine. Mine barely has, it has movement, which is what you want. But it is nothing like the stock one look how loose that is 
real loose. Mine, loose but snug, and that's what you want. So, found another situ found another problem. <sighs> okay, you have the original shock and you have the upgraded shock. Let me show you something. If you match up the collar caps, right, these little rings, if you match up the collar caps, look at that. The stock shock is much longer than the new shock. And you can see that they're even. Plus, this shock, the stock one, is why it's bigger. It has a bigger piston in it than this one does. These are eight scale buggy and truggy. Um, I'll tell you what, there's, that's a lot of travel distance right there. That's quite a bit. So I'm not sure if that's going to be an issue for us. It's going to make the truck sit lower, which is kind of what I want. I do want it to sit a tad bit lower, uh, but I don't know. This is all about play. Who knows? I can put this whole truck together and find out that I'm going to have to take it back apart and put it back to stock just so the stupid thing will run. Um, but yeah, I just thought that maybe I would point that out to you guys. It's crazy, right? Way, way different. Look at that. Just a lot of difference. I know you may think, well, you know, that's not a lot. That is a lot. When you're, when you're talking, that's a lot of, that's a big difference right there. Oh, you are putting on new arms, right? You are upgrading to new arms. Instead of just tearing apart everything and then having like a pile of screws and hardware laying there, what you want to do is take the other part, the new part, set it in front of its counterpart and then move each screw over so like i just took out that set screw and put it there now i'm going to pull this pin out and put it there and then i'm going to remove the droop screw put the droop screw there i'm going to take out this bracket for the sway bar put it there that way i don't screw up meaning i don't install the arm backwards or the left one on the right one it just it closes the gap for error and that's what you want Be one of the questions or comments that i keep getting over and over is about the aluminum everyone is telling me that the first crash or hit or whatever i'm going to bend the aluminum and all this other stuff guys only key parts of the truck are aluminum Everything else on the truck is plastic. I've been in RC cars for, I don't know, probably 15 years. I am not new to this. I've been doing this for a long time. And that is the reason why I have chosen the parts that I have chosen to upgrade. Because I know that those are key structural parts in the truck. The rest of it, is all good you want a little bit of flex you want a little bit of bend you know that will keep you going so i plan on just upgrading the gearbox which needs to be done whatever else is already aluminum on this is i'm just replacing it with blue and then the steering rack and all this that's plastic that needs to go to aluminum because that needs to be as strong as possible if i land and crash Usually what happens is, is the arms will break off right here at these pins. That's where they usually crack off at, right there. If this was an aluminum arm, it would bend, twist the bulkhead, maybe even rip out the gearbox. So it is good to have what we call fail points. It is very important to have fail points in the vehicle. So for an instance, if I was running all metal transmission, I mean the, 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 the gears metal, everything is metal inside. And if something like, let's say the motor was to slide over, well, something's going to give. Hopefully it would just be the pinion on the gear strips off. But if you had a plastic gear, it would just shred that plastic gear and not go no further. 
But if it wasn't like that, you could internally damage something along in the drive shaft because whenever you hit something or hurt something in the car, it is going to find the weakest point. So if it takes a hit on the drivetrain, the weakest point in the drivetrain is what's going to break. So it's always good to have a little bit of plastic in between certain things for failure. It's a very basic concept. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you sit here and think about what I'm doing, you're like, well, yeah, he is upgrading structurally what needs to be upgraded structurally to make the car sounder, tougher, right? Everything else is staying stock, plastic, because I know that I need those fail points. But I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I appreciate y'all so much. I should have been doing this kind of stuff long ago. I should have never even gotten to the computer stuff. Um, my videos are getting 60 views in a day. That has never happened with the computer stuff. So I just want to thank all of you guys who watch my videos, who are new to my videos. I, I love your comments. I love your, your criticisms. Everything about it, I need you guys. And hopefully we can do all of this together. So without, thank you for watching y'all. We're going to get this ball rolling, man. But I'm telling you, this blue and black aluminum with the carbon fiber, it is looking sexy. Yes, put these little tires on. This is our new battery charging station. However you want to call it. Looks good, right? Nice and uniformed, ready to be charged. This way I can mount it to the wall. Like I can mount it anywhere because it's on pegboard, like wherever I want to put it. Um, so I think I'm going to make some tripods or like some little L-shaped brackets to kind of mount it at an angle because you got to be able to use it and stuff so